Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Serap demands CBN governor accounts for missing 100 billion naira debt notes. Now, Serap has urged CBN governor Olaya Mikadoso to account for over 100 billion naira in dirty and bad notes and other large sums of cash, as highlighted in the Auditor General's report. Serap questioned the missing 7.2 billion naira and 4.8 billion naira budgeted for construction and renovation projects of the CBN Ducey and Abel Kuta branches, which remain incomplete, demanding explanations and recovery of funds within seven days. The organization emphasized that this allegation reflects serious violations of public trust, the Nigerian Constitution, and the CBN Act, and anti corruption obligations, noting concerns that dirty and bad notes may have been diverted into the economy. Serap highlighted the CBN's failure to account for significant loans to Enugu and Anambra state governments, totaling over 3 billion naira, stressing the need for transparency, accountability, and recovery of missing public funds while holding responsible parties accountable. Now, joining us to have a discussion on this is Frank Elianya, as a senior financial analyst, Tech Cabal. Good morning, Frank. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and always a pleasure to be on the show. Always a pleasure having you. Well, so Sarah is asking, or rather demanding, um, you know, that the, the CBN governor, you know, just tells us what's going on, is accountable for. A hundred billion naira debt in is a lot of money, and putting that into, you know, the system, we don't know what it's being used for, but what do you think about Sarah's demand? Okay, so w when I read that news, I was... Uh, uh, I had to go look at the, uh, if there was any release from the CBN that actually said that that money was missing. And uh, so far, the CBN hasn't ha hasn't said that uh, that money is missing. Um, there's allegation, yes, but I think first of all we need to establish if there are, if there is a miss if if if, there are, if the money is missing in the first place. And uh, it is up to Sarah to prove that the money is missing. That's the first thing. Because mm -hmm. if uh, the CBN had, um, has not replied, which I don't think they're going to do because they don't think, they might say the money is not missing. Um, after all, you didn't go into the CBN vault to check if the money uh, isn't there again. But um, I think what they are demanding which uh, lends itself to transparency is uh, good for the um, for the system is good for the cleaning up of the system um, if the CBN if it's possible for the CBN to come up uh, come out and say hey look um, what you're saying isn't true this money is still there and then then um, it is good for everyone at least we know that um, they are being held uh, accountable, uh, accountable. You know, mm -hmm. and then uh, also it also means that they might then get to tell us what they do with this money because I I had to go look up the CBN Act um, up, up, about uh, Naira notes. There is a clean clean notes uh, policy of uh, 2018. That policy that, that, that um, doesn't say what the CBN does with uh, dirty um, dirty and unclean notes. Um, it doesn't say what the CBN, whether the CBN takes it out, whether it uh, um, recirculates the money, which I don't think uh, um, is proper for them to do. And also, the CBN Act uh, says that you can't recirculate, and the DMBs cannot recirculate the money. So if the C if the DMBs cannot recirculate, uh, recycle the money, uh, um, it means that there is another thing that the CBN does that probably probably cleans up the money, mm -hmm. turns it into new notes, and then brings it back into circulation. But so far, a first is, is to establish that there is actually uh, funds that are missing. Then the other one is to also um, know exactly what the CBI does when it gets this missing note. What is it going to do with that money if it's, if, if it's just still there? I think um, in, in that direction, Seraph is uh, correct. But the other direction of uh, whether it's missing will, is time that will tell. Mm. 
I mean, so when you were just talking about maybe they take these notes, clean them up and put them back into circulation, I was just thinking of recycling and I'm like, yes, we don't really talk more about um, much about recycling in Nigeria and that could just be a good way of recycling our notes. But we hear of so many times that there are public funds missing. And, you know, this, this is coming from government officials, people that you think would prioritize our welfare and ensure that whatever monies that they're generating from, from us, they're using it judiciously and not just spending frivolously, right? But when you hear of public funds missing like this, do you think for a case whereby Sarah has demanded that, you know, the CBN governor comes out to let us know, do you think they would actually do that? Do you think the government um, tries to be responsible when it comes to accountability? I, I think if you're living in a sane society, um, the CBN ought to respond. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they don't respond in seven days, of course, Sarah you, um, sh should go to court and, uh, you know, file an action against the CBN which will then mean they have to go to court and respond there in court. So finally, we get to hear what the, um, what the issues are. Um, but I feel that before that seven days uh, um, timeline, they should respond. That's what um, um, a responsible government does. Um, unfortunately, it hasn't been a lot of many Nigerians that we have a responsible government. Mm. Um, for many years now, there's not been any form of accountability. Um, transparency is almost zero in, uh, in almost um, every government agencies that you know. So uh, if the CBA responds, then that will be a different part it's to be a step in the right direction. It's all, it also helps a lot of people um, clarify um, things that they have been asking themselves or questions that they've been asking themselves. Me too, I've been asking myself, what exactly do they do with it? Do they just store it up in their vault and uh, just look at it? You know, um, if, you're, if, if that's what they're doing, I don't think it's, it's the proper thing to do. That should be something that they, um, that should be some cleaning up um, and then re, um, making them better and then bringing them back into the system. And then, of course, um, I know that they have they've sort of prioritized um, educating people not uh, to mutilate the Naira and also yeah. the health issues that result as a result of uh, mutilating or unkept uh, notes in circulation. So I think I think that's where the conversation should actually lead to um, being a lot more transparent about that. Mm. So I mean, you 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 were talking about Sarah would have to. Um, take them to court if they do not respond within seven days. But how can we even trust our justice system that they will do the right thing? Because mind you, these people are holding public offices. They kind of sometimes have like the autonomy of how the, the verdict will come out, especially when we have courts that are not credible. So what can we, how are we sure that even the courts, they will charge them properly? Well, it's... <laughs> Is a reality that we we live, and uh, um, they the the trust, the public trust in the judicial system has uh, deteriorated after the uh, elections yes. that was conducted in 2023. So I I I think um, that uh, somehow there might still be some modicum of. Uh, um, uh, um, people or, or some people that that still want to do the right thing some judges that are still you know um holding on to what they truly believe in and wanting to deliver the right judgments uh, i don't think um 100 percent of them should be all that corrupt i feel that um somehow um and sometimes you know they use technicalities many times as, as their language uh, to make things um to to confuse things, I, I think also it behoves the um, the legal practitioners as the lawyers to also maybe tighten up their cases to to ensure that um, once they bring it to the judge, um, no form of technicalities can take it away. Uh, that will force the judge to do the right thing um, because then it will be on um, he he will be unable to explain where he got his different judgment from so i think uh, oftentimes also on the on the on the lawyers to tighten up the cases so if Serap is going to court 
it needs to make sure that it has a solid case. So first of all is um, is to answer the question, is there really a missing um, money? Is mm. it, are, are the monies missing? If the monies are not missing or if you cannot prove that the monies are no longer there in the vault, I don't think you have a case. Um, or if you can prove, if you have evidence, that the monies are missing. If they're just going to court on on assumptions or mm. allegations made by some some persons, I think they are going to lose the case. Because if the CBN comes out and tells you and I that the money is still in their vault, of course you can. There's no judge that will tell the CBN uh, take somebody to your vault and go and snap it and, and bring mm -hmm. to us here. We're talking about the the um, the central government. Uh, the central um, treasury here. So um, it's not something that you expose like that. But if there's a evidence truly that those monies have been transferred and are uh, reintroduced into into the system, then that's where they have a case. If they don't have that evidence, I'm, I'm sorry, there's nothing that will happen about it. And you can't blame the judges um, because of that. Um, you have to maybe trust the system to be able to say, okay, this is what has happened and this is what has not happened. Mm. But do you think that the judges, you know, in the first instance, would even do proper investigation? Because one of the things Sarah has highlighted is the fact that there was supposed to be some construction and renovation to, I think, the, the CBN's Ducey and and um, I think a Belkuta offices, right? I think that's for 7.2 and 4.8 billion. And we don't even know where the money is. The, the, the renovations are not being done. There are abandoned projects. Of course, if you have the money... And if you're saying you want to be able to um, do this construction, you will do it because you have the, the funds, right? But when it's been abandoned, so where, where are those monies? Do you think the courts in itself would even do proper investigation as to this if the CBN comes out to say, yes, we have the money? So first of all, it's not the courts that uh, or the judges that should do the investigation. That's why you have the police. So mm -hmm. if uh, the police do their job properly, they will be the one to find out, okay, uh, something um, is fishy here. And I think um, basing their case on that property might be their best bet of uh, coming out with something out of this because it is something that you can actually see. Um, there is a location of where the property should be. There is there an allocation that was made uh, about that property. There should be um, a sign there that says this is the contractor. So mm -hmm. you can actually call that guy up and say, look, um, what has happened to this uh, construction? Why have we not um, uh, completed it? And there is a timeline for that construction to be completed, say so two, three years or four years. Why hasn't it? And they said it's since 2010. So what we're talking about here is 14 years construction, which is mm -hmm. absolutely abnormal, you know? And I think that's what they've got a case. 7.2 billion naira is not a small money, although the Nigerian government often make it look like it's uh, checking change these days. And politicians tell you that it's nothing mm -hmm. since they're getting 170 million naira to buy um, SUVs. SUVs yeah. So it is, it is, it is, um, it, it behoves again on this, on, on Sarah to have the best legal team mm -hmm. and also to get the police involved to ensure that the proper they have the right um, material, the documents and all that, and before they proceed to court. And I feel that's where they're going to get this, um, the CBN to actually open up, and then also they get, um, the judges get to give them the judgment that they desire. Again, I say that it is a good thing that they are getting, that they are holding the CBN accountable, because um, the CBN looks like the, the um, this large, looming... Um, um, umpire that nobody holds to account and when once you have um, civil society organizations like this coming up to them to say look you can't just continue to do whatever you like um, you serve the public you should be able to tell the public what you are doing how you're spending the money that belongs to the public it's is a good thing it helps it helps to bring back trust mm -hmm. in the society and mm -hmm. I and I hope that they will be able to um, take this logical conclusions because oftentimes we hear about cases from Serap that they have uh, started that are not going or making any headway. Sometimes it's not a fault. It's also because of the judicial system that we have. 
they keep going on vacations, they keep mm -hmm. uh, postponing adjoining cases and all that. And then, of course, if the other parties have uh, um, SAN on their team, they can decide to bring in a lot of uh, um, technicalities that to prolong the case. I hope that may not be uh, that should not be the case in um, this time. Yeah. I hope that the CBN will be able to say we are a responsible agency, we're a responsible arm of the government, and we're going to do the right thing. We're going to tell the public what we're using the money for. Mm. Well, I, I hope they I hope they really do that. Um, and my final question is, how, how do we demand for accountability and transparency? I know that SERAP is one organization that is championing this and, you know, kudos to them. But even as a people, shouldn't we get to the point where we say enough is enough? And if you're going to hold a public office, we expect you to be accountable. We expect you to have some form of transparency. And that's the only way we can trust you and trust where you're taking us to, trust your mandate. So what can we do to make, to impress our own, um, you know, feelings, our own thoughts to the government to ensure that they are transparent and accountable? I think the simple um, answer to that will be um, information to to have more information at your disposal. That will mean how much do you know about the particular agency that you're trying to hold account of? Mm. How much do you know about the particular officer or the office that he or she holds that you are going to hold them accountable? So, if you have some information, you'll be able, you, you'll be able to say. This is what the act that set up your agency says. You should not go this way. And then you can actually go to court and, and demand that they do what is right, you know. Mm -hmm. But once you don't even maybe take the rigor to read up about that agency, to know whether the person is flouting um, the rules, uh, you can do. You can only complain. Mm. But at the end of the day, you can't do anything about it. And then also, when you now have the information, when you've read up and you know the information, what other steps do you do? You go to court about it. You, 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 can, um, you can look out for how, how to address or, or get them to do what you want to do. There are other ways but, um, that may not um, necessarily require going to court because uh, the processes of uh, getting judgment in Nigerian courts are very, very yeah. long. Um, it could be maybe gathering people together and forming um, a coalition that are like an opposition that goes to them or write latest petitions and all that. And also, this the, the EFCC, for instance, have been asking people for petitions upon petitions about uh, any government mm -hmm. officer that's doing uh, something that is um, not or they're not supposed to do. Um, you can't write a petition without information if you don't have the right evidence. So if you've got that evidence if you've got you can gather yourself together and do that um, petition and deliver it and it might take long for them to do something yes uh, we live in a very corrupt society but I don't think we should um, keep up on it like that you know uh, also the justice system I don't think we should give up on it there are several um, arms there are several um, steps in the judicial system you have the magistrate court you have uh, um, the state uh, high court, you have the federal high court, and then of course you've got you, you, you then go to the appeal court, you have the supreme court, you know. So you need to understand how they work. Once yeah. you can understand how they work, you can take advantage of that and get these guys working, doing the right thing that you're supposed to do. Hmm. Well, I hope that, you know, they start to do the right thing. And even for us as a nation, the people here, I hope that we, we demand for what is rightfully ours. I hope that we start to hold them accountable. Because like you said, if we do not have enough information, then we don't even know what we're asking for. So it's important that we start to make ourselves more aware, especially of these people and the offices that they represent and let them know that this is what we want. It's democracy. You need to listen to us. You need to do what is, what is okay for us. And our welfare should be what is paramount to you. And hopefully, we'll just get a Nigeria that is um, you know, thriving and better. And honestly, sometimes I wonder the use or the role of the EFCC, the ICPC, because you expect them to be able to flag these things down quickly 
and start to ask questions and investigate. So hopefully, you know, all of these agencies as well, as, as well as the people, the Nigerian people, start to hold, um, um, you know, our government officials more accountable and ensure that they are transparent in all of their dealings. Frank, we want to say thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having a conversation with me on this. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, we've been speaking with Frank Eliania, is a senior financial analyst at Tech Cabal. And we've just been talking about the fact that Serap has demanded that the CBN, um, you know, tells us that they are more transparent on the 100 billion Naira dirty notes. Well, we don't know what is being used for, but we hope that they can come out to let us know what is being used for in, you know, in the spirit of transparency. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. We want to say thank you for watching The Breakfast. Thank you. And Happy New Month to you once again. It is the 1st of July. We hope that all your, of your dreams, you know, come true here in July. My name is Rome Paulson. I will see you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.